Hey folks, welcome back. The real estate numbers are in for week ending May 31st. I'm gonna go over the numbers in a second, but at the end, I'm really gonna spend a few minutes talking about why have prices not come down? I know people are expecting with this whole COVID situation that we should be buying properties at a, 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 at a bargain price, at a fire sale, at, at whatever you, it's like the dollar store is selling houses now. It's not the case. And I'll explain why at the end of this, after I get through all the numbers. So looking at freehold for Vaughn, for the few weeks in a row now, prices have been going up. These are average sold prices. There's different ways to explain it. There's different ways to interpret any of the data that I'm giving you here. And I'm just trying to report it in a way that makes sense to everybody. So average sold prices have gone up. One way of explaining why they've shot up so much is that of these 22 that sold, 10 or more were sold at $1.2 million or more. So maybe it's not over the 2 million, but if, if about half of the properties sold at 1.2 million or more, that brought up the average price. Now, were those one, $2 million properties or more, were they normally less and now they're selling for more? Or were they the $1.8 million properties that have gone down to 1.6 and 1.7? We need to look into it a little bit more. However, as a, as a, a simple explanation and just a simple looking at the chart, average sold price has been going up very aggressively for the last few weeks. Sales did go up a little bit, but there's only 22 that have sold in the week and it's been pretty steady for the last few weeks. This is for Vaughn freehold properties. Looking at compared to last year average sold price, we are way ahead of where we were the same week last year. So average sold prices are the highest that they've been for 2020 so far and we are almost 17% higher than we were last year. So no problems with average prices in the Vaughn area. Sales were way less than where we were last year. Activities down across the board everywhere, but very steady still at what we've been selling. Hopefully we'll see some more sales coming up because listings have been increasing every single week. Last year for the same week, we we're at 146 freehold properties in Vaughn that were listed. This year, we're only at 98. But if we look at the trend, 42, 58, 87, 98, listings have been going up week after week. Is it because people are getting more comfortable in having their home out there now? Are people kind of getting out of the whole COVID and want to kind of get back in the swing of things? Maybe. We'll talk about that, though, a little bit more at the end. Looking at Toronto freehold properties, you know, it took an average sold price, took a little bit of a dip, but when I look at this, 172 properties were sold. 96 of those, so more than half sold at list price or more. You know, 15,000 really, really is nothing. To me, for the last three weeks, prices have stayed about the same. So they went, if we look at this week here, the previous week, it's up 15,000, down 15,000, it's the same price. We are down from where we were by 11% at the beginning of the year. We are up almost 2% from where we were last year. So for price-wise, the Toronto market is fairly strong. Nothing to report there as far as being able to buy properties for free when more than half have been selling at list price or more. We are way below where we were last year for sales, but on average, we've been increasing. We took a dip here. That's the labor, uh, the, the long week in the May 24, but prices have been gradually, not prices, sorry. Sales have been gradually going up. Listings very, very steadily going up. Now I'm going to flip back for a second. Sales and listings. Listings are going up at a steadier pace and at a more volume than what properties are being bought at. This potentially 
could be a problem down the road for us. We will talk about that as soon as I'm done with the data here. Looking at condos in Vaughan, there was only four sold. I'm not going to say much about it. We really can't make too many assumptions on only four sales, but prices have not plummeted down even with that. We are way ahead of where we were last year for average sold prices. Last year we sold 23 for week ending May 31st. This year we've only sold four, but listings, we are less than we were last year, but we're not that far off. For Toronto, we sold 133 condos last week. We've been pretty steady though at sales and we took a big jump from one week to the next. 53 of those sold at list price or more. The average sold price in condos is only slightly lower than it was at the high point at the beginning of March. And we are 3.3% higher than what condos were selling for a year ago. So the condo market, although it's lost a lot of steam, it's still fairly strong and ahead of where it was last year. Here are the sales. Again, they kind of been pretty steady around these weeks here, but sales really shot up last week. Look at new listings. We're almost where we were last year for new listings. Sales, nowhere near where we were. Listings, very close to where we were last year. Can you kind of see a potential problem if this trend keeps up? Months of inventory. Vaughn Freehold, we're sitting more in a balanced market, although prices are continuing to go up. Vaughn Condos, I don't want to talk too much about that when there's only two, three, four sales a week. Toronto Freehold, very strong at less than or, or two months of inventory. And Toronto Condos, 3.7 months of inventory. Except for Vaughn Condos, we have a very solid steady market. So why haven't prices come down? I know what you've been hearing out there. I know there's so many people who we might consider as prominent people, smart people, people that should know what's going on, predicting the future for us all. It's almost like the weatherman. They can say what they say, and, but if you're not watching it every hour, things keep changing. So this is what's happening in Toronto real estate market. It really boils down to supply and demand. This is my take on it. It's what I see every single day. Supply and demand. Are buyers prepared to pay the price? Are sellers prepared to lower their price is also part of the factor, public sentiment. So if you put your property on the market today, you look around you, there's, there's maybe nobody else in your neighborhood that's for sale. And you're on the market and there's lots of showings. Why would you sell it for lower than what your neighbor sold a month ago, two months ago, three months ago? Why would you? You wouldn't. You want to get as a seller as much as you can for your home. Well, if you're a buyer and you've been looking to buy into this particular neighborhood, and a home finally comes up for sale. Because remember, we are way lower than listings than where we were last year. But a home finally comes up for sale in a neighborhood you want to be in. And you go see that. And you've not seen a home in that neighborhood for sale for weeks. Are you going to buy it? Well, if you're the only buyer, you're probably going to try to negotiate. But if there's other buyers looking at that home, you have a certain fear of loss. This is really what supply and demand is. There's very few properties still for sale, but there's many buyers looking to buy those few properties that are for sale. Let's get out of real estate for a second. We saw this example with the hand sanitizers and, and the face masks. As soon as we got into the COVID situation and everybody went out and bought hands and there was none left, what started happening? Those stores that had it started increasing their prices. They could basically get what they wanted for those masks. 
for this hand sanitizers. If you know that if I'm a retail store, I'm the only one who has the hand sanitizers, I, I can bring the price up and buyers are gonna buy it. Now, for, for other reasons, that's not a good thing and the government stepped in and says hey stop doing that there was health situations involved that's a, a, maybe not the greatest examples but when it comes to houses even if activity is way down which it is it's for prices it still boils to supply and demand you can analyze what's going to happen down the road all you want but if there's one home for sale in a neighborhood and multiple people want to buy it that seller can really get the price that they want. And that's what's happening here. And that's why prices are continuing to go up or stay very strong. It's because of supply and demand. There's no other explanation. And now what's happening? Well, we're starting to see more traffic on the roads. We've opened up a few businesses and we're close to opening up a few more. The economy is starting to get going again. We're still a long ways off, but it's, it's like a, 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 a train. The wheels are starting to turn a little bit. People are getting tired of being locked up at home. They're starting to go out there now. Well, the housing market is going to play a big part in our recovery. And there's many people that had plans this spring they were going to buy or they were going to sell. Well, that could be switched over maybe to the summer now. So this summer could be our new spring, and we're seeing it with sales increasing, new listings increasing. The only thing that kind of has me like looking at and going, hmm, is sales right now, new, new listings are outpacing sales. If this keeps happening, that gap is going to get bigger, and we're going to start to see a lot more properties on the market. If the buyers don't jump on board to buy these up, then we're going to start to see months of inventory increasing. Then we're going to start to see prices going down. And it'll still boil down to supply and demand. If there's going to be a lot more supply and people aren't buying, prices will come down. If people are still buying and there's buyers now, I believe, looking to jump on board and get into the market, you're going to see prices stay the same or continue to grow. That's a recap of what's happening for week ending May 31st. My name is Santo Sessa with Remax Premier. If, um, if you like what we're talking about here, subscribe below, hit the bell button so you get reminded when these new videos come up. Stay safe and we'll talk to you in a week. Have a great day.